So let me just structure that code a little, a little more nicely. So we have, first we have the start command, which is this, which responds to start messages and, and does a greeting. Then we have the um, show offer functionality, which takes our products, serializes them to a message and prints a keyboard. And yeah, let me see. Uh, yeah, right. And now we're going to handle the actual uh, the actual order. So we're going to handle order products. Um, and what we need to do now, as you as you or as we saw, when the user clicks a button, the the um, the content of the button, which corresponds to the product name in our case, will be sent as a message. So basically, we need functions to handle all these um, all these product names. So for each product name, we need to have a handle function um, that our bot can um, start a purchase of uh, this product. And in order to do so, we're going to walk through our products area. Uh, so we say products.foreach um, and there we have a function and for every product we're going to do app.hears and we're going to, let me see, pass the product name and then we have a context so this will be another function that will be executed like, like just like above here um, for every product um, we're going to listen to the product name so every time we receive the product name in this case for example we receive new Coda quantum this function here will be executed all right um, and this time we're going to pass the entire um, context object um, up here we extracted the reply markdown function from the context object because we just wanted to use the reply markdown function um, but this time we're passing the entire context object um, and we're going to say console log first um, and we're going to say um, I'm just going to show you these parameters in a moment so we say context.from.firstName we, we just want to do some logging here to see what's going on name is about to buy which product the product with the name p which comes up from here dot name so um, and we just leave it for now like this um, and now let me show you the debugger so if you're not familiar with visual studio code you have debugger mode here which is very useful um, so we can say start and then it starts our application with the debugger and if we say let's say new coca cola quantum now so it will execute the um, the listener for this string which is new coca cola quantum um, and then it will execute the function here and now let's inspect this context object what it has to offer so let's watch C oh, ctx just bring that down and bring that up a little bit and basically that's the entire telegraph context with every function you have or you you're able to execute um, from telegraph and as you can see here there's also the reply with markdown here or the reply function which we used above here and here and you can also inspect um, ctx.from to get the from object of the telegram update which includes the sender's first name id language code and username and you can also inspect ctx.message which includes the actual message object um, which again consists of the chat, the sender, the message ID and the text and the text is um, what we matched against our regex here in this case our regex was just a string namely exactly that text fragment um, yeah and here we're using uh, ctx.from.firstName so we're using uh, this property here to print basically to print Ferdinand uh, is about to buy um, which or whatever product we have currently or in which listener we currently are in this case we're in the new coca cola quantum listener all right so let's just run that one more time so we say uh, node in xjs and then we're sending a message of new coca cola quantum and as we can see here ferdinand is about to buy new coca cola quantum all right and the only thing that is missing now is um, we don't want to only uh, print a log message but we would want to actually um, initialize the purchase or the payment and in order to do so um, we need to we need to pass an object um, let's 
sorry if I'm confusing you, but let's go to the Telegram documentation here. Mm, and we have available methods and we have send invoice, all right, somewhere. Send invoice, yeah, here. Um, so we basically want to, sorry, basically want to send, uh, I'm sorry, uh, invoice, yeah. So we want to send the user um, an invoice and it consists of various parameters, some of which are required. Um, a chat ID, which is um, the yeah the user's chat I yeah basically chat ID of the user we want to send the message to, a title, a description, and so on and so on, a currency, prices, um, or an optional photo URL um, which corresponds to the photo of our product, and so on. So we want to send an invoice, and Telegraph has a method for that. So um, uh, yeah. Let's let's define a function up here, which is function create invoice. We're going to wrap the creation of uh, we're going to wrap the creation of this object here because it contains of many parameters and so on. I don't want to have that in our listener here uh, down here, so I'm I'm outsourcing that into a function, which says create invoice, and it takes a product as an input, and then it will return an object, um, which contains let me see the provider so that's that's the object which is required by telegraph it contains some additional parameters um, in addition to these ones here so we don't have the chat id because that is abstracted by the telegraph library but instead we have yeah l let's just see so we have a we need to pass a provider token to token which is exactly the token we got in the beginning from from the stripe api so this token so we say provider token equals payment token then we need to pass a start parameter actually uh well actually i don't know what that is let's just um let's just say foo for now uh, and then we need a title so the title of the of the invoice basically and of course this should correspond to the product the user is currently about to purchase so um we say title equals product product.name um then we have a description uh which is product.description then we have currency so there are a li there's a list of currencies of available currencies um yeah here so we have um basically for all available currencies there's a short code for instance uh, if you i don't know Whatever, if you're using Euro, you're going to use uh, EUR. So we say, for simplicity reasons, we're only going to use, or we're only going to support Euro here. So we say currency is EUR. Um, the photo URL, photo URL will be exactly this URL here from our product. So product.photo URL. Um, then there's a parameter which says it's flexible, and this um, this is related to the shipping options and also, for simplicity reasons, we're not going to handle shipping for now. We only we only want to accept a payment or a, an an amount for the product, um, but we for now we don't want to care about shipping. With is flexible, you can specify whether the price depends on which shipping method the user chooses. Um, but we we just want to ignore that for now. So we say is flexible false. So we have a fixed price. Um, and we also don't need a shipping address, which says, uh, which is defined by need shipping address. Uh, we say false. If usually you want to do shipping because if the user orders a product, you also want to ship it to the user. Um, so the user needs to input an address where the product will be shipped to. But um, we're going to leave that for now, um, or we're going to set that to false for now. So we say we don't need a shipping address because our products are, I don't know, because our products don't need to be shipped because they're virtual products or services or whatever. So we're, we're just going to skip the shipping for now. Um, and we say prices, and prices will um, require to be an array. Um, and there should be a label um, which corresponds to yeah, so so if you're doing shipping, you will probably say, or, or let's say you have multiple versions of your product. You have a, uh, I don't know, s some some drink, and it has multiple flavors. So you can say the one flavor is this price, and the other flavor is this price. So you can have one product with different prices, but in our case, we only want to have one price. Which so we have one area entry, um, which is the product. The label is product name, and the amount is um, product price, and 
um, one interesting thing here is um, our price is um, a decimal number so we have for instance 20 uh, 27.99 um, but what is required here is a a non-decimal number so in an integer is required here and as you can see in the sent invoice here's our, our array of labeled prices which corresponds to this area here um, and the labeled price is a, uh, consists of a label and an amount and it says here that the amount um, needs to be integer not float so for uh, for instance for a price of 145 you have to say 145 all right so we need to convert our our decimal number to an integer here and we do that by saying um, by basically by multiplying with 100 and in order to get the decimal point away from there we say math.truncate to make it an integer basically because we have floats here we multiply it by 100 then we would have uh, 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 2799 point zero and in order to get rid from that point zero we um, truncating it uh, truncating it with that function all right and then we also have a payload actually I don't know what that means but we're going to leave it empty for now and basically now we're done with the creation of the invoice object and now we can go down here and say after having locked uh, console locked that uh, that string here we're going to say reply with invoice with reply with invoice and we pass the create the object which is created by our create invoice function uh, above here and yeah so I don't know if that will work let's just see let's just execute that and again oh let's let's say what do you have Oh, all right. Mm, oh, sounds delicious. Iguana on a stick. I want to buy that. And nothing happens. Uh, yeah, and reply with invoice is not defined because we just say ctx dot reply with invoice because that's a function of the Telegraph context object. And what's happening now? Fail the process. Reply with invoice. It's not defined. Um, okay. Well. Let's just start the debugger here. Possibly. Um, and again, oh yeah, so we so we received a message. And let's just see ctx dot message. It is iguana on a stick. And in the ctx object we have, let me see, there should be a reply with invoice function. Reply with invoice. Yeah, they. There you go. CT extra to play with invoice. Create invoice product. Okay, what's the error here? We got the lock, and then we say reply with invoice is not defined. Um. Did I even execute it? Um, I'm sorry. A little bit of debugging now. Oh, oh it says product is not defined now. Yeah, sure. Because um, it's not product, but it's P here, right? So sure and start that again math truncate is not a function why is this not a function because math trun ah it's it's called math trunk sorry I'm sorry and again oh and now it worked and what we got here is um, an invoice so it consists of um, our title our description and the price and now we can say pay and it says sorry telegram desktop does not support payments so we're going to switch to our mobile app now let me see uh, there you go a demo payment bot and now we also have the photo here so it says iguana on a stick the western most famous delicacy delicacy i don't know how to spell it anyway um, and now we can say pay and as you can see here we need to enter some, enter some credit card information um, and the billing address and because we said because we said need shipping address to false we don't have to enter a shipping address here otherwise there would be also a form f for entering a shipping address and but we're not going to do that now because we're not actually handling the um, the the callback so as I said 
in the beginning. Um, after after the user has placed this order, the credit card information will be sent to the payment provider and the order request will be sent to the bot. Um, but we're not able yet to handle the, the callback from the payment provider, which, which is sent after the payment has been processed. Um, yeah, as I said in the beginning, the payment provider will send a message or a, a kind of a callback message, and we still need to handle that message in order to get our payment um, working. So let's just implement that last part. <coughs> 